Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another little video about uh, Metasound stuff. In this one, we're just gonna look at making your own custom audio effects. Uh, so the process is pretty simple. Once you have your own effect, it's great. You can, you know, you can uh, find it here in the graph. So in this case, I've made a phaser. Whoops. Whoops. In this case, here we go, phaser. Uh, and we can just hook it up just like it's a regular node, and that's really cool. You know, in this case, uh, maybe I make it a stereo effect. And, you know, let's just listen to it right away before going further. So that's pretty cool. There's a, a custom phasing effect. Um, and to, uh, you know, to edit the, the node or to edit the, the effect that we've made, we can just double click it to access it directly. So I think that's really great. That's really cool that we can update things so quickly and directly here. So let's do this from scratch. And if you're looking for finding uh, the designs for these kind of effects or the basics, you know, or, or any kind of basic audio effects, if you search a DAFX, D-A-F-X, usually you can find um, you know, these kind of diagrams. That's uh, that's usually how I've done it. I think it's mostly because there's a, a conference about digital audio effects, as well as a book that's published on this if you're, you're into the engineering side of things. Uh, anyway, so uh, to, to get started here, uh, what we need to do is create a new Metasound. And you can see here there's a difference between the Metasound source and the Metasound patch. And the Metasound source is something that's gonna make sound from uh, like we have like a oscillator or a wave player or something like that. Whereas the Metasound patch is something that's going to be used as a node in the Metasound graph, much like the audio effects. So in our case here, that's what we're looking for. I'm just going to name it Phaser. It's going to be slightly different than the, the demo that I showed. And the nice thing is, is right away, I can actually just drag and drop it into the, oops. Uh, into the patch and right away I have my uh, my node there and the reason I wanted to do this right away is because it's cool to see that as we add you know inputs and outputs in this case I have a audio input and output um, you can see that they update right away so that's that's great so I'm just gonna hook it up right away from from there duplicate it so that we can have it in stereo Sorry about the noise here in the background. I'm on the road right now. Um, all right, so that's cool. So we've got that saved and that's all set up. Uh, so the next step here is let's just implement the effect. Uh, what was the design again? We have the dry signal coming in being added to the wet signal. Uh, the wet signal is just a series of all pass filters multiplied uh, by a depth control. Uh, these little triangles, they're like uh, faders. Um, same thing would be to multiply by a knob um, from zero to one in uh, in Metasound, and we'll do that in a second. And then we have this feedback path, and we'll do that at the end because the, the phasing effect doesn't actually depend on having any feedback. Um, we can do it with zero feedback. So the, the nice thing is, is that we can demonstrate an issue here that's gonna come up with uh, uh, feedback paths in audio effects. So here we have, you know, let's just make our all pass filters. So if I search for the all pass, it's gonna come up as the bi quad because there's an option here uh, and in the type. So I'm gonna make four of those. And so this would be equivalent to a four pole uh, phasing effect. So I'm just gonna link those up real quick. Plug them all in. And uh, the, the original design had us adding together the original signal with the, uh, the wet signal. So let's do that, adding to audio signals together. So here we go, one and two, come on, linking them up, that's cool, okay. And then there was also a depth control that we needed, so I'm gonna multiply the wet signal here by a float and make uh, promote it to graph input, in this case, our depth control. So that's hooked up and that's great. So like I said, this is the, the, uh, the basic design. We don't actually need that uh, feedback path. So we've already completed the whole graph here. So let's try it out. 
Oh, we're missing one thing here. We're missing the uh, cutoff frequency. So let's add that in as well with a graph input, cutoff frequency. And I think in most phasers, this is on like an LFO or something, but in this case, we're just making the basics. So let's try this out. We have our cutoff frequency and hook it in. We should get the same result as we had before. Let's have a listen. Great, so there we go. So that pretty much concludes everything that I wanted to show about making your own audio effects. You know, that's the basics. Uh, you're done, it's set up, save that in a plugin and you can reuse it in all your projects. Fantastic. Okay, so now this issue with the feedback, this is something I wanted to look at really quick. So there's this feedback path that goes from just before the depth control and adds to the original signal before being affected by the all pass filters. So, if I take off this, this uh, output here and I try to plug it in, well, that's not, it's gonna say connection causes loop. And even if I try to add it to the, the uh, you know, the original signal and plug it in, same problem, connection causes loop. So the solution for any, any time you need to have a, something coming from later in the graph and heading back is to use a technique here where it's like it delays the, uh, uh, the variable or the value by a small amount so that it won't cause these feedback loops. And the way that you would, it's just by like a sample so that for most events, if you need to, you know, like trigger, like uh, trigger things to change for most events that could be fine. But in the case of a, a audio effect, there is no delay here so that by adding a delay, we're not, we're not getting the same thing as we have in, in the original design, but let's do it for demonstration. Uh, if I promote this to a uh, variable, call it the feedback, feedback path, I can drag and drop the variable and it gives me a few different options here. We have uh, get drop, so this is our regular uh, reference to the value, or we also have one that says get delayed, alt drop. So if I hold alt and I let go, uh, we have this little, you know, this little um, icon here about the time, and now I can, I could plug it in. Um, so if you do need to get something from later in the graph and use it again, this, this technique does exist and that's quite useful. The, uh, the issue is, is that uh, this is not necessarily faithful to the original design. It, it's okay, you know, let's, let's add it and try it out. Uh, we'll still get, you know, this sort of like feedback effect, I think that we're used to hearing in phasers. Uh, I think we also need to put the a control on, or um, a fader on the feedback control so it doesn't just feedback a full blast on us and give us that terrible feedback sound that all audio people know quite well. <laughs> um, so let's just pop that in as well. Here's a, a feedback control. Feedback. Great. So this is a... Uh, feedback path and we have the feedback over here. Okay, cool. And let's just turn this down a bit to start because I don't want full feedback in my ears. All right, maybe here we'll just go graph input, feedback. Sorry about the, the sound in the background there. All right, so let's play it again. So there you have it. Uh, the feedback does work. It's not the same as this graph because there is a slight delay in there. Um, but you know, in essence, uh, this is this is how you can build yourself some effects. Here's uh, some of the issues that might come up, and that's kind of it. So how to make a phaser in Unreal Engine? And I hope that that provides you know sort of a basis for anything else you want to do. So hope it helps, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Cool.